This is the Mile C D9 Pro laser distance meter. It's intended for indoor design, and in addition to measuring single distances, it's packed with other measuring features, including an electronic spirit level and lateral laser reference lines. In this video, we'll cover what comes in the box, the build quality and user interface, and of course, how it measures. There are heaps of features in the D9 Pro, and I will cover enough to give you a good idea as to whether this might be a device for you. So make sure you check the chapter markers in the video description. A word of disclosure first, Miles C approached me to review the D9 Pro, and they sent it to me free of charge, no money exchanged hands, and I'm not being paid for this review, but I do get to keep it, which is great, and you'll see why in just a moment. Miles C did see this video before being published, but they've asked me for my honest opinion and respected my creative freedom in producing this video. And with all that said, let's take a look. The D9 Pro is well packaged, and right from the start you get the sense that this is a quality product. As far as unboxing experiences go, this package makes a very good impression. Inside you get the usual things you'd expect, some paperwork, a manual, a box with accessories, including a cable and lanyard, and of course, the D9 Pro itself. The USB-C cable supplied with the D9 Pro is worth a mention. It's braided and colour matched to the unit, which is a nice touch. You'll definitely appreciate the quality of this cable and the attention to detail. It's also worth talking about this nice carry case. It's well made and a good place to store the D9 Pro when not in use. Let's talk about build quality. This thing feels very well made. It's got a magnesium alloy body, although some of it is plastic, which you'd expect. The buttons feel good, nice and clicky. The charge port is USB-C, which even has its own sliding cover. There's also a quarter inch tripod mount on the back for some of the more complex measurements, and you'll see that used later in this video. There's a torch built in with two brightness levels, and this, I think, is super handy. It also works independently, so you can use the torch without turning the unit on. There's a magnet on the side of the D9 Pro, which also allows you to stick it to metallic surfaces. And there's also an app which you can connect which opens up a whole range of other features. But the standout feature of the D9 Pro, when you first look at it, apart from the lasers, in my opinion, has to be the screen. It's a 2.4 inch IPS touchscreen with really high resolution. The icons are easy to read and the text is super sharp. The responsiveness to swiping up and down or across is also very smooth for a device like this. It's not quite smartphone smooth, but it's good enough to make you stop and want to appreciate it. Whilst swiping the screen seems to work really well, tapping the icons requires a fairly direct tap to make something happen. Perhaps it's because they're quite small and my fingers, relatively speaking, are quite large, but I'm not really sure about that. But look, the touch action is adequate. This menu screen gives you access to a bunch of settings like uplink and downlink to the app, auto rotation of the display, the offset setting for calibrating the device, text size, background brightness, units, beeper on and off control, vibrate mode, and the self timer for when making measurements on tripods, or if you need the device to be absolutely still when taking a measurement. But the big question you probably have is, well, does it measure and is it accurate? Well, the answer is yes, but it comes with a caveat. You need to take note of the accuracy tolerance in the specification, which is plus or minus two millimeters. And you also need to ensure that your D9 Pro is calibrated correctly. So let's talk about calibration first, because it's also mentioned in the guide as an important function for laser measuring devices. Out of the box, my unit seemed to work very well straight away. So naturally I started measuring all kinds of random stuff and then thought I'd try a few advanced features. And it's when I tried the area feature that I noticed something strange. To test the area feature, I used this piece of plywood, which is cut to 854 by 435 millimeters. Okay, so this is small and you probably wouldn't measure it this way, but I placed pieces of timber at each end to create a point to measure to, and then tried to calculate the area. I noticed that the longer measurement was always more accurate than the shorter one. The longer one was out by around plus two millimeters, but the shorter one was out by more. So I used the offset feature to reduce the final measurement by two millimeters. This is quite easy to do. Just use the buttons to select the different numbers on the screen and make the adjustment. The longer measurement was now correct, but the shorter one was still out. I then started to step out measurements from the minimum 200 millimeters and increase them by 50 millimeters each time to see where the accuracy started improving. I noticed that between 450 and 600 millimeters, the measurements became more accurate, mostly exactly correct or to within one millimeter. 
So to test this theory further, I set up this 6 metre measurement. Using a wooden block at both ends, I squared the D9 Pro and measured from the back of the device. This time the measurement was accurate to within specification. In fact, it was spot on. I then ran a practical real-world test, like measuring the internal length of a window reveal. Uh, like if you were going to measure up for some blinds or something. The D9 Pro makes this much easier, and from what I can tell, the measurement matched the tape exactly. So single length measurement is easy and accurate, and in my case, longer measurements were more accurate than those less than about 450 millimeters. But let's face it, anything around half a meter or so, and you'll probably use a tape or a ruler. But before we talk about more complex measurements, we should talk about the lasers. Tapping here allows you to select where you're measuring from. On the D9 Pro, you can measure from the front or the back, and for more complex measurements like point-to-point -point measurements, you can also select the tripod setting. But the lateral lasers are a very cool feature. You can turn on one or both. And here's why you might find that useful. The lateral laser works really well with the digital level. This small number here is the digital level and it's constantly updating depending on how you're holding the device. You can view this in bubble view or in 360 degree mode. But let's say you wanted to align some pictures hanging on a wall. You can easily align the lasers to one side or both to create a horizontal reference line for hanging pictures. In this example, if I align the laser horizontally, you can see that two of the pictures are hanging correctly, but the other two are out. I can then use that reference to fix that problem. Or let's say I have one artwork on the wall and I wanted to create a reference line to hang another one on one side. For that, I only need one laser. First, I can check that the artwork is horizontal. I can set the laser to be horizontal using the digital level and then align it to the corner of the artwork. Now I have a reference line for hanging another artwork. And that's very cool. Now let's look at some of the other measuring features. Continuous mode lets you measure the distance from the unit to an object or wall with a continuous readout of the distance, and that can be quite handy. Live angle display is a bit like using a protractor. First, it calibrates a line of zero degrees, and then you can use the laser to mark out an angle from that zero degree line. To test this feature, I'm using the angle adjustment on this MFT table. I found that the angle measurement was accurate when moving from zero to the desired angle. It's when I tried to fine tune the result that the measurement would start to stray a bit. And I think accuracy over larger distances might depend on your ability to keep the D9 Pro steady. And again, for small scale woodwork like this, well, you'd probably just use a different tool like this MFT table. Point to point is a great feature for when you can't physically access the thing you want to measure. For example, let's say you wanted to measure the distance across this gable. It's not practical to set up a ladder and perform the measurement quickly. Using the point to point feature, I can simply aim the laser at both ends and take the measurement. And to do this accurately, I'd also need to use a tripod and the self timer to keep the D9 Pro still. Now, this could work well for approximating the area for painting this space, but what if I needed something super accurate? Well, that's where you need to consider how well you can actually aim the laser. And that's not a limitation of the D9 Pro, it's a limitation of how well I can position and aim the measurement. If you look at the laser up close, you can see that it doesn't have a pointy end like a sharp pencil. So just where exactly is this thing measuring from? If I try to measure the width of this off-cut piece of MDF, it's hard to know if I'm aiming right on the edge or a couple of millimetres in from the side. The measurement is likely to be different each time by a few millimetres. Now, the distance measured by the tape is a thousand millimetres, and I wouldn't rely on this laser to take that kind of measurement. However, if I measure the distance between these two saw cuts, the measurement is very close, or exactly correct. And that's because I can aim the laser at a more defined point. The middle of the saw cut. Note that I'm also resting the laser on the workbench and using the self timer to keep the device completely still during the measurement. So point to point is accurate as long as I can keep the device still and aim correctly. Now I've already touched on area and again this works really well when your device is calibrated and you're measuring longer lengths like the area of a room. It's as simple as placing the D9 Pro up against the wall and pressing the button. You can extend this feature by selecting volume and taking one more measurement. You can then quickly calibrate the volume of a room. And this could be very helpful if you're calculating spaces for say air conditioning or perhaps the capacity of a storage tank. And the area and volume calculations also work for cylindrical shapes. Uh, I don't often find myself in large cylindrical spaces, 
but I think it could be very useful. Auto horizontal distance is potentially a very useful feature. Let's say you need a horizontal distance between two points, but there's something obstructing the line of the laser. I'll demonstrate on my workbench. The horizontal distance from the end of the bench to the block is 2350 millimeters. Now let's put something in the path of the laser. Clearly, I can't measure to the block anymore. I'll now select Auto Horizontal Distance, which shows up on the unit as indirect length. Now I'll place the D9 Pro back in the same position and raise the laser up above the obstacle and click the button. I need to use a small plastic spacer to hold the D9 Pro in place. You need to be very careful not to move the back end of the device as this will change the distance measurement. But even with this handheld technique, I can still get a measurement of 2348, which is within specification. I'd say this is where the laser is actually super accurate, because if I move it a fraction from the original position when angling it up, I'll get a different measurement. The results show the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle, the vertical elevation of the measurement, the angle of inclination, and of course, the horizontal distance that I was looking for. Very cool. Auto vertical height is similar to auto horizontal distance in that you can measure something indirectly or if you can't physically get close to it. The trick with this one is that you need to keep the back end of the D9 Pro in the same position when measuring because you're effectively measuring an angle. If you move the vertex of the angle around, then you'll get an inaccurate measure. In this example, I'll measure the length of this track saw guide rail. I know the length is 1400 millimeters and it's also written on the guide rail. By using the corner of the bench, I'll align the D9 Pro and point it at the base of the guide rail and take a measurement. Then repeat that step for the top of the guide rail. This measurement was surprisingly accurate. On this one, you can see it's exactly 1400 millimeters, which is quite incredible. You can see that I need to keep the laser very steady and this can be hard to do. I did this a few times and didn't always get exactly 1400, but it was always very close. This second one is 1399, which is so close. You can also do similar measurements to the ones I've just demoed for trapezoidal and triangular shapes and wall areas. And there's a feature called stakeout for marking out points over distance. So it's very versatile. The last feature I'd like to show you is related to the app. The app is easy to find because there's a QR code in the manual which takes you straight to the app store to download it. Once installed, it's a simple process to pair the D9 Pro to your phone. One of the first things you'll see is a history of all your measurements, which is actually kind of handy if you need to refer back to them. But it's the floor plan icon that I want to talk about. You can import an image to superimpose measurements on, or you can create a hand-drawn plan and then sync your measurements to it in real time. I'll keep this example quite simple, but you'll see how it works. I can use the tools to draw a basic four-sided room. Now, I won't be too bothered about getting the drawing absolutely correct because the laser will change the proportions depending on the measurements it takes. Then select a segment on your drawing and take a measurement. I'll just use these two sound blankets here in my workshop as a substitute for a couple of walls. You can see that as I select the different segments of the drawing and then take measurements, the measure distance is applied to the drawing and the proportions change accordingly. This is very handy. You can then share this drawing as a dimensioned image from your phone to your computer or wherever you need to send it. I think this is a really great implementation of a companion phone app with a device like this. If you need to take measurements and share them with people on the fly, then you'll love this feature. Now, there are so many use cases for the D9 Pro and I'm sure that I've just scratched the surface, but to cover them all, well, we'd be here for hours. But should you buy the D9 Pro? Well, if you're doing a lot of measuring on your own and you can't always use a tape, or if you're doing a lot of quoting for jobs on site or for things like built-in wardrobes or kitchens or extensions, or any kind of work where you need to be able to take measurements quickly and accurately and perhaps then share them, well, yes, I think you'd get a lot of value out of the D9 Pro. You'll appreciate the build quality. And actually, the more I use it, the more I appreciate how nice it feels to use and how easy it is to read the screen. I just wouldn't want to drop it. It kind of feels like using your smartphone without a case. But then Milesy does market the D9 Pro for indoor design and they do have versions better suited to outdoor use. And I encourage you to check their website for details. Links in the description. I want to thank Milesy for giving me the opportunity to review the D9 Pro. I'm sure I'll get a lot of use out of it, particularly in the design work that I do.
Now, if you found this review helpful, then please give it a like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing. And remember to check out the Mile C website for more details. There are also links in the description for information on how to buy the D9 Pro. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. There's been a lot to cover in this one. I'm Colin, and we'll see you in the next video.